Today we're going to take a look at how to write decay reactions, which is a type of nuclear equation. A decay can be an alpha decay, a beta decay, it can be a positron emission where a positron is released, and all of these are really ways where an unstable nucleus, which doesn't have the ideal ratio of protons to neutrons, will try to gain stability by releasing one of these types of particles. So let's just jump right into an example. I'm going to start with B, the alpha decay of uranium-238. And right away I can see that the element is written with the element name and then the mass number after the dash. I want to transform this into the correct isotopic notation where I put the chemical symbol for uranium, it's U, and I put the mass number in the top left hand corner, 238, and I put the atomic number in the bottom left hand corner, and if I go to my periodic table for uranium, it's number 92, so I'll put a 92. Whenever we're writing nuclear equations, we want each particle or each element to be represented by a symbol, a top number, and a bottom number, just like this. As soon as I see decay, I should immediately write an arrow, because decay is indicating that the particle mentioned is going to be released, or is going to be a product on the right-hand side of the reaction. I should only have one reactant, which is the atom that I'm starting with, in this case uranium-238. So now it mentions alpha decay. So you might have a chart, or you might have to memorize what an alpha particle looks like. But if I look at this little chart below, an alpha particle looks like this, where it has a top number of 4 and a bottom number of 2. If you remember, that top number is mass, and that bottom number is the atomic number. Or for particles, if we're talking about a nuclear reaction, it's the charge because it's the nuclear charge. But now let's add this symbol to our reaction. So again, the alpha particle, I could put a 4 and a 2 in this kind of way, and I can either put He, because it's really a helium-4 nucleus, or A for alpha. Now, I want to figure out what my other product is. If uranium-238 releases an alpha particle, what does it turn into? So I'm going to have another product, so I'm going to separate it with a plus sign. We have to figure out what our new top number, our new mass is going to be, and what our new bottom number, our new atomic number is going to be. So if I start with 238 and I release from that 4 AMUs of mass, what's my new mass going to be? Well, it's going to be 234. And if I start with an atomic number of 92 and I lose 2 from that, what is my new bottom number going to be? Well, it's going to be 90. If, an I, if I have an atomic number of 90, it's no longer going to be uranium. If I look up 90 on my periodic table, that goes with the symbol TH, which is thorium. So notice in these decay reactions, I'm actually going to be changing the element itself because the number of protons are going to end up changing, and therefore the identity is going to change. So you're going to have to use your periodic table to look up the new symbol. When you're done, you want to check that your reaction has conservation of mass and charge. And what that means is you want to check that your total top numbers and your total bottom numbers on each side of the reaction add up to the same thing. So if I look on the left-hand side, I have 238 as my top number. And if I look on the right-hand side, I have 4 plus 234, which adds up to 238 as well. I therefore have conservation of mass, because that top number was mass number. I want to make sure the same is true for my bottom numbers, that I have conservation of nuclear charge as well, because every reaction needs conservation of mass and charge. So the bottom number on the left is 92, and on the right, 2 plus 90 adds up to 92 as well. Therefore, this is a correctly balanced nuclear reaction. This is where you'll catch any mistakes you might have made in writing your decay reactions, especially for beta decay, because that one seems to be that one that most people struggle with. Let's try another example. Let's go back and do A, which is krypton-81 undergoing beta decay. 
So I see Krypton 81, let's write it in the way that we should with the top number, mass number on top, looking up the atomic number for Krypton, which is 36, putting that on the bottom and making sure I have an element symbol. Immediately put your arrow because it says decay. That means beta decay means that a beta particle is being released and it should be a product in the reaction. If I look up what a beta particle looks like or reference my memory, depending on your teacher, I see that a beta particle is zero over minus one, meaning it has a mass of zero and a charge of minus one. And you can write the symbol as E because it's similar to an electron except it's emitted from the nucleus, or B for beta. Your choice, zero over minus one E. Put a plus sign to separate that from the next product. Now we have to figure out what our original atom turns into after releasing a beta particle. So if I start with a mass of 81 and I lose zero from it, I still have a mass of 81. The mass is unchanged. If I start with an atomic number of 36 and I lose from that a negative one, what's going to happen to my atomic number? It's actually going to go up to 37. And if it's 37, that's no longer krypton, that's Rb rubidium. This is where you'll catch any mistakes you might have made by checking that your top numbers and bottom numbers add up to the same thing on both sides. So on the left hand side, my top number or my mass number is 81, and on the right I have 0 plus 81, which adds up to 81. On the left, my bottom number or my atomic number is 36, and on the right I have negative 1 plus 37, which adds up to 36 as well. So we have conservation of mass and conservation of nuclear charge. This is where if maybe you put the incorrect atomic number, you'll catch it. So instead of putting 36, uh, 37 on the right, let's say you put 35 accidentally. Well, when you check negative 1 plus 35, you would get 34. And wait a minute, that's not the same as the left-hand side. So this is where you'll catch any mistakes by doing this last double check. So beta decay is actually unique in the sense that be, due to its minus one charge, the atomic number of your original atom is actually going to end up increasing. Let's try one last example. Uh, let's do C, the positron emission of lead 206. Lead has the symbol PB. Let's put 206 in the top left hand corner. Let's look up its atomic number, which is 82, and we'll put that in the bottom. Immediately put your arrow. If you see the word emission or decay, that means those particles are being released. Look up what a positron looks like. It's 0 over plus 1 E or B, meaning it has a mass of 0 and a charge of positive 1. So let's put that into our equation on the right-hand side since it's being released. Let's figure out what our new top and new bottom numbers are. 206 minus 0 is 206. 82 minus 1 gives me 81. The element now changes. It's no longer lead. It turns into Tl, which is thallium. Make sure that your top and bottom numbers add up to the same thing on each side. 81 plus 1 gives me 82. And 206 plus 0 gives me 206. So I have conservation of mass and charge um, in all of these correctly balanced nuclear equations. As a note, you can have nuclear reactions where one of these particles is on the left-hand side, but it would be a type of artificial nuclear reaction, um, something where you might see a, a, an atom is bombarded with a certain type of particle, and then you could put it on the left-hand side. But Anytime you see decay, anytime you see emission, um, this is a natural process where you have one unstable nuclei decaying or releasing these particles and they would be products on the right hand side.